Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be continuing the Horus Heresy with Praetor. Um, I'm going to paint him as a son of Horus. And he also comes with a decal sheet, so that's interesting. And so I assemble the model up to the point where it gets in the way of painting. The cape is fully assembled, but separate from the body. The backpack is separate, the head is separate, his shoulder pads are separate, his axe is separate, and his little thing on the base is separate. And here's all the paints, washes, and oil things that I used for this model. Um, trying to figure out how to get this format good for the video, but so far here's just one picture with all that I used. Now with Liquitex modeling putty, we then apply this over their base. And then we rapidly dry the top with a hair dryer, and then with a dry brush I just pat 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 it in, and it creates some texture and bends it in. However, the texture sort of softens over time a bit, so it's okay to be a bit extreme because it'll soften. And now with Eschen Grey, Grey Sear and White Scar White, we're going to paint the model. So with Eschen Grey, we're going to paint everything with an airbrush to get the shadows in. And then we're going to airbrush Grey Sear from the top to create the light values. So light to dark. And then with White Scar White, we're going to dry brush. But we're only going to dry brush very specific things. We dry brushed the backpack. We dry brushed his face. We dry brushed his axe. And we dry brushed uh, the base thing that he stands on. As well as like, uh, like his arms and legs where the gold filigree is. And after all that is done, I went back with white scar white and a little bit of lamine medium and then applied it on all the sharp angles and joint things that he has here and there on his like elbows and other places to make them stand out. I should have used more uh, lamine medium, the lines were a bit too strong and they stood out a little bit too much. We applied it to the feet as well. And now, with this new color, Sons of Horse Green and Lamine Medium, we paint the model. So basically, I add, I, in the video I only show one, I ended up putting two brushes worth of the Sons of Horse Green in, three drops of Lamine, and one drop of water, and mix that together. Because uh, the first one with one uh, brush worth of Sons of Horse was too diluted. And so then I apply this all over the model where the green is going to be. And it turns out pretty well, actually, yeah. It's very light, very bright, so we're gonna have to add the shading. Uh, one thing I will note is that after I applied one round of it, I then diluted a little bit and applied it in some areas, like his hands, because the dry brushing there was very strong, and this covered it better. So this this is always an artistic thing. You have to be able to make the judgments of what, to, how much to add, how much to dilute, and stuff like that. Alright, with Viridian Hue and Lamp Black oil paints and some mineral spirits to dilute it, I create a wash. 
Now, I'm not going to go into each step of what I did because... So the wash was a bit more diluted than I would have originally liked, and so the amount that it applied uh, depth-wise wasn't the best. I could have made it thicker, but like I screwed that up, and so, well, I was stuck with it now. And I wasn't going to wait for it to for the paint to dissipate, or the mineral spirits to dissipate long enough to make it thicker, so essentially, uh, this is part of the artistic part where you have to build up skill because uh, some colors together don't work as well, or sometimes things are a bit too thin and you have to kind of roll with the punches. And so basically, it well, it wasn't super thin, it was still thin enough that I had to repeatedly apply layers, and then when it looked like it was getting too dark on the most raised areas, I would go in with a sponge and just wipe off the excess, and so, I kept going back of applying a few layers, wiping, apply, wipe, apply, wipe, back and forth until I got the effect that I liked. Now because it was so thin like this, and applying the many coats, is that the dark colors really uh, sat in the recesses much better, so the transition of colors was pretty good. And so, yeah, this is like, it, it, this is an art form right here, this is, <laughs> this is rolling with the punches and making the best with what you got. Alright, now with Abaddon Black and Lamian Medium, I make a wash. I apply two brushes worth of Abaddon Black, two drops of Lamian Medium, and one drop of water to make it flow better, because I wanted this color to be much stronger, and I apply it all over the parts that are going to be black. So the inner part of his armor around the neck, his, uh, whatchamacallit, his shoulder pad, his left shoulder pad, his hair. I basically have to do around two coats of this onto his hair and the insides and stuff, because it's still a bit diluted. Yeah, this is an art form. You have to keep trying because each color and combination has pigmentation issues. Alright, with Corn Red, Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Troll Slayer Orange, I'm going to be uh, painting the cape. So essentially, I paint a base layer of corn red all over the cape. Then with an airbrush, I apply Mephiston Red from an upper angle to catch all the edges and stuff, covering pretty much 90 to 95% of the whole thing. Then I move on to Evil Sun Scarlet and do the same thing, but less as much as Mephiston. And then I do the same thing with Troll Slayer Orange in the end, but less than Evil Sun Scarlet. And it picks out all these things. And so, also, he has this rope and he has these little red circles inside his collar thing. I also apply corn red, then highlight with Mephist, and then Evil Sun Scarlet on these things appropriately. And then finally, with Troll Slayer Orange, I didn't use Lamy and Medium this time because I wanted to try what the GW painters did. So I watered down Troll Slayer quite a lot. And then I painted on the rope. Uh, I just tap, tap, tap tiny little dots to pick out the most light, upper raised areas of it. If for very tiny details, you just tap it with the brush that's been diluted. Uh, you load up your brush, press it against a paper towel to get rid of all the excess splash, and then you do tiny little taps. All right, and then after that, uh, paint like the upper, uh, upper crescent of each of the circles around his neck, you'll see in the video, and then I painted the edges, uh, the sharp edges of each of the folds of his cape with Troll Slayer Orange. Around two coats of it because of how diluted it was with water and it worked well. It blended well in some areas and was sharp in other areas.
All right, with more Van Brown, Agrax Art Shade, and XV88, we're gonna paint the leather. So we're gonna paint his leather gun holster and his leather belt thingy that hangs from his gun or attaches his gun to his body with Morn Fang Brown. Then we're gonna apply Agrax Earth Shade all over. Then we're gonna go back with Morn Fang Brown and highlight pretty much like for the gun holster around 80 to 90 percent of the entire thing, all the edges and such and such. And as far as the straps, like we're not painting the center of the straps, we're painting the edges of the straps and like these thin fine lines because it the leather strap was kind of molded with these small little hit, like raises up on here so we're going to pick them out with Morning Brown. Then I do a one to one ish mix with Morning Brown and XV88 and I pretty much highlight the same thing again but around highlighting around half. Only the very sharp edges um, on some of the giant open faces and stuff we slightly do some coloration by uh, like little feathering techniques on some of the open pieces of leather on the gun thing to make like a transition from dark to light. And then finally with some pure XP88, only the most raised areas of what we have painted before with the half and half morphing brown XP88 mix. And so the most raised areas in there, at the very edges of each of the leather straps and such, such, and maybe a few like slashes in the leather to add some coloration. Alright, with Doom Bowl Brown, Cadian Flesh Tone, Pallid Witch Flesh, and I don't have it here, I didn't show it, but Agrax Earthshade, heavily watered down by the way. And so what we do is we take care of the face. So with watered down Doom Bowl Brown, I just apply it onto his hair thingy, and it naturally highlights itself, because this part was dry brushed as well, and so it picks out and it fills in the recesses. So, quick, simple, easy layer. Then with Cadian Flesh Tone, watered down, we apply it onto his face. Then we do a light mix of Cadian Flesh Tone mixed with Pallid Witch Flesh, and we apply it on like his eyebrows, his raised areas, the skull edges of his face, if you understand what I mean. And then we add a little bit more pallid witch flesh and we apply it on like uh, his brow, eyebrows, edges and stuff, We're trying to pick out more simple areas and highlight. This is a small subtle process. And I didn't show it but I had Agrax or shade and I watered it down a lot and I applied it to his eyes to like the spaces between his eyebrows that meet in the middle a little bit and then all the space between his hair and his flesh where it meets. I applied several layers because I thinned it down a lot because I didn't want it to ruin anything. Then I went back with the Canadian Flesh on Pallet Witch Flesh mix and re-highlighted it in certain areas. And uh, yeah, it turned out pretty well. Not as good as the last one, but like it was. there's very little to work with here. <laughs> all right, with Vallejo Gunmetal Gray, Duralunum, Seraph Sepia, and I don't show it, but Nuln Oil. So I wanted to get the dark, darkest metal, a very black metal, and then the most silvery metal. And I accidentally grabbed the in-between metal gun metal gray, which could be like a lead belcher. Endure aluminum is basically like a rune fang uh, steel, that's pretty good. And so because of that, I needed non oil to further darken the gun metal gray. So with the metal I grabbed, the gun metal gray, I then applied to all the metal pieces, uh, like little clips here and there, his gun. Uh, the spaces between the armor. I know that's supposed to be black in turn with highlights of gray, but I like the metal. I just it stands out more to me. And uh, and yeah, uh, I apply this all over the metal, and then I take the Nolan oil, and then I apply it all over to darken it further because I grabbed the wrong metal, <laughs> and this was easier than repainting everything carefully. And then once that was done, I went back with gunmetal gray, and then it depends. I basically highlighted 90% of everything I did before. Uh, 
except for the chainmail. I did not touch the chainmail yet because I wanted to do something special with it. I overbrushed the metal skulls that he has on top and parts of his gun. And then back with the dura aluminum, I then used this and then applied this on the chainmail because I wanted like very dark holes throughout it and then very silvery top chainmail. And I also used this to highlight the edges of his gun and stuff like that as well as the tips of those clips holding the straps together and just small things on his face and such and such uh, yeah simple easy job and then with Seraph Sephia I then applied this to some areas of the chainmail to add something a little bit of color to the handle of his gun I don't know I didn't know what to do and then of course uh, on parts of his axe I applied it like on the folds, ridges, and like edges where the metal met. Then I went back with Dura Aluminum again and then applied it there. So there was a bit of a back and forth. The axe doesn't look the best, but I couldn't really... Like these giant open planes of metal, I've never really been able to get right, essentially. And now with Dawnstone and Seraph Sephia, we're going to paint the terrain thingy he's standing on. So basically with Dawnstone watered down a bit, we applied all over. And so it naturally highlights because we dry brushed this thing earlier. And then with Seraph Sephia, I watered it down a bit and I applied directly into the recesses of the stone thing. And then once that dries, I then take Seraph Sephia and water it down much further and then apply like two coats of it as a wash to add some more color to it and let the transition of colors be more natural. Alright, back to these colors, Mornfang Brown, Agrax Urshade, and XV88, we're going to paint the base. So I apply a layer of Mornfang Brown all over. It's a bit thin and it's a bit see-through, but that's fine, it can create discoloration and stuff. Then I apply Agrax Urshade all over, and then once that dries, I take XV88 and I try to dry brush it, but like I said before, the putty smooths out over time, so there really wasn't much to catch on to. I'm going to probably have to find a better way to add more indents into it. And then, uh... It, the color didn't look too right, so I took the... I still had some of my Seraph Sephia that was watered down, so I applied it onto the base, and then I applied the rest again onto the stone statue. This is where I did the two coats on it. And then with Black Templar's Contrast, we're going to paint this... Uh, his cloak has like these lines on them, detail lines, and contrast paints flow very easily off the brush, so it makes it very easy to paint this. And also Black Templar Contrast paint is very glossy and shiny. <laughs> Have to take care of that later. And then with Vallejo Gunmetal Gray, which is sort of like a lead belcher-ish, and then Dura Aluminum, which is a bright silver, Liquitex Transparent Burnt Sienna, and Seraph Sephia, we're going to paint the metal. So with the Gunmetal Gray, I apply like a drop or two, apply some of the Liquitex ink in there, and then apply like a drop or two of the, uh, what is it, Liquitex Gloss Varnish, yes, to make it more transparent and make it flow better because adding the inks into the paints makes them very watery and so essentially I just painted the whole metal with this so this created a not a bright silver but like sort of a muted brass and I apply it all over it. This mix is the reason why I like these mixed paints is because I can customize the colors but also because they flow very easily off the brush and it makes painting much faster much easier and uh, yeah, and so I just paint all the metal and brass with this. And then what I do after that is done, I then take Seraph Sephia, and then I remind myself why I never do this. So this is supposed to add like a goldish thing to it, but it dulls all the shine. And so it kind of ruined all the paint I just did. <laughs> it made it dull. 
um, made it not a metallic basically. And so then I went with my Duraluminum uh, mix and uh, so basically I remixed the metal but this time with Duraluminum which creates a very bright brass and then I highlighted pretty much everything all the edges and stuff uh, this was me be very, being very careful because I highlighted the edges on the inside and outside uh, for the feet the outside for the hands and other such things like the little circles he has here and there and then once that was done what I did was I took pure dura aluminum and mixed it into the uh, dura aluminum transparent burnt sienna mix and so essentially this created not a pure silver but like an in-between so it wasn't gonna be pure white but it wasn't gonna be as like light brass and then I used this to highlight the most raised areas and most prominent edges that I painted with the dura aluminum transparent burnt sienna and this created some good highlights. It wasn't bright, striking silver, but it was noticeable highlights. And then with Troll Slayer Orange, Evil Sun Scarlet, Mephiston Red, and Corn Red, we're going to paint the gems. Now I'm doing this in reverse because, I don't know, I, I just some, somehow find it easier to do. So I paint all the gems on his arms, knees, and chest with, or neck I guess, with Troll Slayer Orange. Then I coat like a center dot of each gem and the uh, surrounding crescent with Evil Sun Scarlet. Then with Mephiston Red I paint half... Uh, like a top half of each of the gems and a part of a crescent. And then with corn red I then apply this as a crescent nearly all around and like a fourth or a quarter of each gem on the opposite side of the Troll Slayer orange. And then I assemble a model. However, I realized that uh, the foot uh, terrain piece that he stands on should be applied last because it kept like falling off with me, like squeezing it and applying pressure to get everything done. So do that last.
And then I'll give him a decal, a Sons of Horus decal. So I trim the edges of the decal to make sure there's as little decal as possible because if there's a lot it causes trouble. And then let it soak for a bit. Then I pull it out with a brush and then I just finagle it onto the shoulder pad and align it as best I could. Luckily there's a, like this little tiny hole on the shoulder pad that like is in the dead center. So it's very easy to align it. And uh, I can't show the next step because like if I do it I'll ruin my desk. But basically, I take a hair dryer once the uh, thing is on there and aligned, and then I just nuke the, the uh, decal with a with a high heat hair dryer. And so essentially, what happens is it shrinks the decal and it makes it adhere and like smooth out and conform to the curvature of the thing. And uh, it works pretty well. Uh, there's a little bit of overlap here and there, but like there's nothing I can do about that. I've tried. And then with Liquitex Matte Varnish, I apply this all over and around two coats of it onto the decal once it dries and like two, like three or four coats onto the stupid uh, Black Templar's contrast lines that I painted onto the cape because that stuff just shined through. Then with a hand drill, I drilled into the foot, and then I applied a paper clip with super glue in to make sure he's adhered to the base properly. And done. I always notice that uh, when I do it on video and rotate him around, he looks better than when I do the pictures because the pictures are so high res, they pick up every single little brush stroke and make it look, I don't know, like dirty or tacky. <laughs> and so he looks better in the video than he does in the pictures picking out all these details that I could never see with my own natural eyes. But anyway, so he's done on the base. Maybe not the best of bases, I thought the dirt and terrain would look better, but I don't know, it's hard to say. But as far as the model goes, it was a pretty fun model. He was very straightforward and simple. I really like the color. I um, really like how a lot of things turned out. The cape turned out great, but airbrush always is one of the easiest ways to handle capes for me. Um, and because this whole entire cape was separate, that made things super easy. He has a lot of interesting colors. The metal skulls on him and stuff was an interesting addition. His hair and stuff was nice, and that came out pretty well. The armor is pretty cool. The... He doesn't have super bright goldish filigree. Uh, he has a more muted breast, but that's because of the colors I use. It's just more of ease of access. I would like more brighter, richer golds, but I cannot find a way to do that. I can't find any inks that would create that for me. So, <sighs> well, roll with the punches. And yeah, overall, I'm going to say he is uh, an 8 out of 10. I guess the base held it back for me, and maybe some, the details of the axe, the axe is so prominent, but I can never really get those giant flat planes of metal to look right. He's very close to a 9, so he'd be like an upper 8, almost 9, but the base and his axe hold him back, and yeah, and that's about it. I mean, I really like his gun holster as well, so that's pretty cool, like it came out really well. The leather on him came out really, really well. So anyway, uh, yeah. So, like the video if you like the video, comment if you want to comment, share if you want to share it, and I'll be back for more, hopefully sooner, because I just goofed off on this one and took it a couple extra days because I just straight up didn't do anything. <laughs> Alrighty then, so, see you then, bye.